35 strange facts only exist in Japan. Japan is the East Asian country owning beautiful landscapes that enchant countless people. Besides its beauty, this place also has a long-standing culture with numerous peculiar and unique aspects. For example, in Japan, there are over 700,000 people who withdraw from society. Japanese people are workaholics working up to 80 hours a week. The first geisha was a man, the culture of stuffing people into subway trains, and more. Let's explore 35 strange facts about Japan to understand more about this unique country with the highest life expectancy in the world. Number 35 Naked Festival in Japan Japan is famous for many festivals, but Hadaka Matsuri is surely one of the strangest places. This festival takes place on the third Saturday of February every year at Sadaiji Kanonin Temple in Okayama Prefecture to pray for good luck. During the festival, men have to strip off all their clothes in the bone-chilling cold of Japanese winter. They only wear a single white loincloth called Fundoshi and a pair of white socks called Tabi. Thousands of Japanese men strip naked in public to ensure a lucky year. What do you think of this festival? Feel free to comment below. Number 34. Work Addiction Japanese people have long been known for their diligence and addiction to work. Some work more than 80 hours a week, and many end up exhausted dying from strokes or suicide. Japanese people work a lot, to the point of exhaustion. There's even a term for dying from overwork in Japan, called karoshi. For Japanese people, they don't have the habit of changing jobs too often. The ideal, in their view, is to work for one company when young and stay there for life. Colleagues might even be considered a second family, as they work together for 12 to 15 hours a day. According to the Daily Mail, hundreds of deaths due to overwork, such as strokes and heart attacks, are reported every year in Japan, along with a host of serious health issues. This has led to lawsuits and calls to address the problem. What do you think of this challenging issue in Japan? Feel free to comment below. Number 33 Over 700,000 people as Hikikomori Social Withdrawal Hikikomori are people who voluntarily withdraw from society. They are often young, averaging 30 to 31 years old or middle-aged and unemployed. They live with their parents, spending most of their time indoors with food and drinks brought to them. Some even avoid all communication and live like this for decades. Typically, many cases of Hikikomori are associated with extreme childhood experiences or even trauma. Low achievements, especially when combined with high family expectations, seem to contribute to the development of Hikikomori. The Japanese government has been concerned about this phenomenon for many years and has sought various ways to integrate Hikikomori into the community. Number 32 About 1,500 earthquakes in Japan every year. Japan experiences a high frequency of earthquakes due to its location on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Initially frightening, you'll gradually get used to it because hundreds of small earthquakes occur in Japan each year, most of which are barely noticeable. There are about 111 active volcanoes in Japan, and about 15 volcanic events, including eruptions, occur annually. Many of these pose serious threats to human life. An interesting fact is that Japan uses a different scale to measure earthquakes, called the Japan Meteorological Agency Seismic Intensity Scale. While the Richter scale indicates how much energy an earthquake releases, the JMA scale indicates the degree of ground shaking at different locations throughout the affected area. The JMA scale is used because Japan believes that measuring the degree of shaking that people feel and the impact on the surrounding environment when an earthquake occurs will help people understand what to do when a major earthquake strikes. With zero being the lowest value and seven being the highest, each step on the scale comes with descriptions, such as hanging objects may sway and people sleeping may wake up and official warnings about measures to be taken during earthquakes will be announced based on the JMA scale. When an earthquake occurs, it's safer to hide under a table or take cover in a safe place. Running outside is very dangerous because many things will fall on you and cause injuries. Earthquakes don't directly cause as many deaths as many people think. In fact, the number of deaths directly attributable to earthquakes is not high many dies from fires, suffocation due to gas explosions, or being buried. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? Feel free to share your experience in the comments below. Number 31 World's Most Punctual Train Lines With an average delay of less than one minute on the Shinkansen high-speed rail line between Tokyo and Shinosaka in 2018, Japan's railway lines are considered the most punctual in the world. 
being late is uncommon in Japan. If a train is delayed, the ticket inspector must apologize, and the railway company might even issue a delay certificate if the train is five minutes late. If it's delayed by an hour, it will be immediately announced on the news. Number 30 Cry Workshops in Japan In Japan, many schools and companies organize cry workshops to encourage their students or employees to cry to reduce stress and help them feel comfortable and able to share their emotions. Companies hire a handsome man with the ability to cry to play sad videos and wipe tears for participants. In schools, a professional called Namida Sensei or Tears Teacher is invited to organize activities and lectures about crying. The reason behind these crying programs is that Japan is among the countries with the lowest crying rates in the world. Some believe there's a stigma against crying in Asian countries, considering it a sensitive action, showing weakness. Therefore, crying workshops help individuals express themselves and relieve stress better. Number 29. High rate of extramarital affairs. Japan has a low divorce rate, but not all marriages are smooth. Even in difficult situations, they choose to stay together. This is because many Japanese women are homemakers and divorce would make them financially difficult. Men fear not being able to see their children after separation because in Japan there's no shared custody after divorce. Only one parent gets custody. In Japan, the view on extramarital affairs is not as strict as in many other places. Some areas even have arranged marriages. Therefore, the rate of extramarital affairs in Japan is very high. According to a survey by Sagami Rubber Industries in 2019 of over 14,000 people, 15.2% of women and 20.5% of men admitted to sleeping with someone other than their spouse. Number 28. No begging in Japan. When in Japan, you'll never see people begging or lying helpless on the streets, seeking pity from others. Why is that? Although homeless people are looked down upon and considered lowly in society, they don't degrade themselves for a meal. The self-respect of Japanese people is very high. They believe they could die but not beg for food. In Japan, beggars are the most looked down upon because they believe the samurai spirit wouldn't allow them to do so. If they have nothing to eat, they will collect cans for recycling, sleep in cardboard boxes, scavenge for leftover food at convenience stores, or rummage through garbage bins. Number 27 Legal Yakuza Gangs in Japan Yakuza originated from thieves and gamblers from the Edo period and evolved into a nationwide criminal system. During Japan's modernization, they even penetrated deeper into the economy. After World War II, the Yakuza rapidly rose in the black market. At its peak in the 1960s, this criminal organization had over 184,000 members. At that time, the Yakuza had close ties with politicians. This long-standing history somewhat explains why the Yakuza are still not considered illegal. Yakuza in Japan are specialists in debt collection and protection for entertainment districts. They also have offices, organizational charts, operational areas, and everything must be registered with the police. Japanese Yakuza won't attack ordinary citizens because doing so would damage their reputation and attract police attention. You'll only get in trouble if you go out and enjoy yourself without paying or cause disruptions affecting the businesses in those areas. The leaders of Japanese Yakuza can be quite affable and value honor. For example, in Japan, there's the Yamaguchi Gumi Gang, one of the most ruthless and largest gangs globally, with an estimated annual income of $6 billion from opium, protection rackets, usury, and even the Japanese stock market. What do you think about the Yakuza in Japan? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Number 26 Unique One-Room Hotels in Japan This is considered one of the craziest innovations in Japan. Instead of regular rooms, the rooms in Japanese hotels are designed in a very unique capsule-like form. They resemble cocoons, so they don't take up too much space to construct. These kinds of hotels are for everyone, regardless of wealth, social status, or position. What do you think of this capsule hotel? Would you like to experience it? Share your thoughts below. Number 25. Sleeping on the subway. Japanese people work very diligently, so they try to make the most of their downtime to rest and the subway is an ideal place to sleep. Without the need for seats or beds, they simply rest their chin on a piece of rubber and start sleeping as if they were at home. In fact, in Japan, those who nap during the day are considered lazy if they sleep on beds, but napping on the go, like on the train, is commendable. And the act of napping is called inimuri. Number 24, doing everything alone is completely normal. 
Is there anyone here who wants to visit Japan but doesn't have a travel companion? Feel free to comment below. Don't worry if you don't have a companion because Japan is a great country to enjoy solo experiences. In other countries you might feel anxious when entering a restaurant and dining alone but in Japan, eating alone is not shameful at all and many people do it every day. Choose a seat at the counter, watch the chef prepare your meal and enjoy your delicious meal. Not only limited to dining, going to movies or late night karaoke alone is also very common in Japan. In fact, it's so prevalent that entire businesses and chains in Japan even offer services catering to solo customers, from karaoke where you can sing in a personal booth resembling a spaceship cabin, to yakiniku-like restaurants where diners can enjoy delicious yakiniku meals alone. Furthermore, in Japan, there's a bar called Bar Hitori where you can go alone, strike up conversations with others, or enjoy drinks in your own space. Indeed, Japan is a society where loneliness is embraced and anything can be done alone. What do you think about these types of establishments? Feel free to share your thoughts with me. Number 23 Women Give Gifts on Valentine's Day In other countries, Valentine's Day on February 14th is typically known as a day for couples to give each other gifts, chocolates, and flowers. However, in Japan, it's women who are expected to give gifts, and this occasion is not just for couples. In addition to women giving gifts on Valentine's Day in Japan, giving chocolates to male colleagues on this day, called girichoko, is also very common. Female office workers often spend a lot of time and money buying limited edition chocolates from famous stores to give to their bosses or male colleagues at the company. A month later, on March 14th, is the time for women to receive gifts back on White Day. Men are expected to reciprocate gifts to their female colleagues three times the amount they received on Valentine's Day. Number 22 Complex Waste Sorting System Confuses Many Japan boasts an extremely detailed waste sorting system. When living in this country, you'll find that there are specific rules for sorting everything from paper, metal, to kitchen scraps or electronics, and you're even only allowed to dispose of garbage on certain days of the week. When traveling to Japan, you'll come across trash bins at train stations and convenience stores, all clearly labeled for bottles, cans, packaging, and more. Although this may lead you to think that environmental issues are a top priority in Japan, in reality Japan is one of the largest users of single-use plastic in the world, and you'll notice that everything here is individually wrapped in plastic. From fruits and vegetables at supermarkets to pieces of chocolate in boxes. And the truth is, at the end of the day, much of the sorted and meticulously collected waste ends up being incinerated together. What do you think about Japan's complex waste sorting rules? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Number 21 Couples in Love Only Need to Meet One to Two Times Per Month Can you believe that couples in Japan don't see each other every day like in other countries? They completely find it normal to meet only a few times a month. They also don't spend much time together, no texting, no sending photos. It's not that their love is dull, but it's the culture in this country, where couples prioritize work and careers over emotions. What do you think about this fact in Japan? Comment below and let me know. Number 20 Super Complicated Dining Rules The dining rules at Japanese tables are really complicated with a lot of things you're not allowed to do. For example, you're not allowed to move food plates, not allowed to leave half-eaten dishes, not allowed to skewer food with chopsticks, not allowed to pour your own drinks, and many other things. And especially, you have to say the word oishi, meaning delicious several times while eating, or else it will be considered impolite. Number 19. Encouraging slurping when eating Despite being a country that highly values etiquette and has countless rules in social culture, slurping noodles or soup while eating is encouraged in Japan. This surprises many foreign tourists, especially those from Western countries. Japanese people view slurping noodles as a sign of enjoying the food, and it's considered the highest praise for the cook. It also helps you eat faster and fully enjoy the flavor while the dish is still hot. What do you think about this peculiar fact of Japan? Share your thoughts below. Number 18 Japanese have nearly the highest life expectancy in the world. The average life expectancy in Japan is 85, only lower than two countries worldwide. Japan has held the title of country with the highest life expectancy for many consecutive years. Elderly Japanese people, despite their age, can take care of themselves without much assistance from others. The high life expectancy in Japan is attributed to its moderate climate, good quality of life, and the scientific eating habits of the Japanese people. 
They have secrets and a very healthy diet, so not only do they have a high life expectancy, but almost everyone also has beautiful skin. Anyone who reaches the age of 100 in Japan is honored with a silver cup from the Prime Minister, which has been a tradition since 2009. However, since then the number of centenarians has increased significantly, so the government switched from silver cups to silver-plated cups since 2016. As of 2019, there are nearly 70,000 people aged 100 and above in Japan. What do you think about the high life expectancy in Japan? Leave a comment with your thoughts. Number 17 in Japan, there's one vending machine for every 24 people. With 5 million vending machines, Japan has the highest density of vending machines in the world, estimating one vending machine for every 24 Japanese people. What do you think about this convenience in Japan? Most of these vending machines offer items like fruit juices and soft drinks to quench thirst in the sweltering heat of summer or warm the body in the freezing winter with a hot chocolate coffee and tea. Some machines even sell alcohol and cigarettes, however you might also find some machines offering unique items like bananas, love letters, instant noodles, or even bottled water from different regions of Japan. Number 16 Japan imports over 80% of coffee from Jamaica. This type of coffee is called Blue Mountain, grown in the region of the same name in Jamaica, and it's highly popular. It's grown only on small family-owned plantations at over 7,000 feet altitude and usually reserved for connoisseurs. The coffee has a light flavor and lacks the bitterness of most other types of coffee. It's also known as the most expensive coffee in the world, so if you have the opportunity, you should try it. If you don't like coffee, you can also participate in a Japanese tea ceremony, which is an ancient tradition of Japan and also very interesting. Number 15 Horse Meat Dish This is something few people think about. Japanese people love to eat horse meat, and horse meat is also very popular in this country. It's even called by the national flower name Sakura Niku, meaning cherry blossom meat because of its light pink color resembling cherry blossoms. Horse meat has been consumed in Japan since the late 16th century. By 1960, as the role of horses in agriculture and transportation diminished, this meat became quite popular in Japanese kitchens. Live horse meat called basashi is often served in restaurants. It's usually eaten with grated ginger and sweet soy sauce. Number 14 Culture of Removing Shoes Before Entering a House This is a minimum courtesy not only in Japan but also in many places around the world. As soon as you enter a Japanese house, show your courtesy by taking off your shoes and placing them on the shoe rack by the entrance. The entrance of Japanese houses or reception halls is where you'll see signs indicating that you should remove your shoes before entering. For example, if there are slippers placed around the entrance, that's a sign that guests should take off their shoes and put on the slippers. Or if the floor at the entrance is lower than the floor in the living area, that's also a sign that you should take off your shoes. Number 13. The first geisha in Japan were men. The first geisha in Japan were called taikomoki or hokan, they were male geishas. Their job was to entertain guests by demonstrating talents and assisting geiko and maiko which are female entertainers. However, as time went on the number of geiko, the term for geishas in Kyoto today increasingly outnumbered taikomochi. Taikomochi became scarce and almost disappeared from society. Number 12. The majority of Japanese people use electric trains as their means of transportation. This is a highly favored mode of public transportation in Japan. With a network of railway lines covering the entire country, you can go anywhere just by using electric trains. Electric trains in Japan are extremely accurate in terms of time, which is very convenient for choosing train schedules as well as calculating travel time. Japanese people often use electric trains to commute to work and school, so it's very common to see many Japanese people crowded on trains. Whenever you're on an electric train and hear the announcement of Jin Shinjiko, meaning a personal accident, it's almost certain that someone has jumped from the train. And this is something that frequently happens in Japan. Number 11. The culture of stuffing people into subway trains in Japan. Because Japan's railway system is, one might say, unparalleled, nearly everyone here uses electric trains. It's because of this that a unique profession exists in Japan, the job of pushing people into subway trains. During peak hours in Japan, railway attendants known as Oshia or pushers perform one of the most peculiar jobs in the world by pushing passengers into train cars. 
It's unavoidable that many passengers eager to their workplaces on time have to endure the tight squeeze inside the trains. Number 10, wearing suits, ties, carrying briefcases to work, but spending the whole day sitting in the park. Ever wonder why Japanese men dress in suits, wear ties and carry briefcases, but end up sitting in the park? They may be unemployed, but don't want to face their families, fearing criticism and blame. Because Japanese men care deeply about their appearance and don't want to lose face with their wives and families, they always seek places to hide and only return home at the end of the workday. Number 9. Bringing back gifts for co-workers and relatives The term omiyage in Japanese is often translated as souvenir in English. However, in Japan, omiyage means much more. While in the West, souvenirs are simply a friendly gesture. In Japan, giving omiyage after each trip is expected and anticipated by both the giver and the recipient more than anything else. Even for a short trip to a nearby town, you must bring back omiyage. Failure to do so will result in strange looks. In Japan, there's even a saying that on average, each person spends 15 minutes sightseeing and 45 minutes choosing omiyage. Number 8. Cleaning is part of the curriculum. Children under 6 are taught how to clean and tidy up objects as part of daily activities at school to instill deep respect, responsibility, and equality. Of course, some tasks like cleaning bathrooms, painting, and repairs are assigned to professional cleaners. Number 7. In Japan, children take the bus to school by themselves. In Japan, children from 5 to 10 years old must independently use public transportation such as buses or walk to school without their parents. Schools and parents in Japan often teach children these skills so they can be independent and self-reliant. The success of this system is due to reliable neighborhoods that always watch out for children while allowing them space to learn. There's also a popular TV program in Japan called Hajimiti no Otsukai, or My First Errand, where children aged two or three participate and the kids run errands for their parents while a secret filming crew records. Independence is highly valued in Japan. What do you think about this? Leave a comment below. Number 6. Japan is a country without a capital. When talking about Japan's capital, people often think of Tokyo. Do you think so too? Let me know in the comments. However, is this really true? Traditionally, Japan's capital was the residence of the emperor. In the past, Japan's capital was located in various places. By 1868, the emperor's residence and the headquarters of the Japanese government were both moved to Tokyo. Japan once decided to designate Tokyo as the capital of the country in 1950. However, in 1986, the Japanese government decided to revoke Tokyo's status as the capital. To this day, Japan's constitution does not contain any provisions or decisions regarding the capital of the country. Therefore, legally speaking, Tokyo is not the capital of Japan, and Japan does not have an official capital. Today, the central government agencies, the Japanese Imperial Palace, and the residents of the Japanese Imperial family are all located in this city, so Tokyo can be considered the unofficial capital of Japan. Number 5. The world's oldest company is in Japan. Kongo Gumi is the oldest operating company in the world, established in 578. It's considered a Japanese construction company and the longest continuously independent company in the world, operating for over 1,400 years until it was merged into a subsidiary of Takamatsu in 2006. It specialized in building temples and shrines. This company even built Osaka Castle. If you're into exploring and interested in Japan's temples, you can visit Kanazawa, known as Little Kyoto. Number 4. Over 80% of Japan's land area is hills and mountains. Japan is a country with a large hilly and mountainous area, accounting for over 80%. This includes over 100 active volcanoes, making up about 10% of the world's total active volcanoes. If you enjoy breathtaking landscapes, you should explore Sanriku Fuko National Park. This vast park is where you can experience the wildest nature with rugged cliffs jutting into the ocean, peaceful fishing villages nestled in small bays, and the freshest sushi restaurants around. Number 3. Japan has more than one alphabet. The Japanese language is extremely difficult. Many foreigners struggle to learn Japanese, and part of this is because Japan has up to three different alphabets, even four if you count Romaji and Latin alphabets. Japanese alphabets have a long history and an interesting development. Kanji characters were imported from China and initially only used by men. 
Meanwhile, katakana characters were used to assist in reading Chinese characters and hiragana characters were used by women and those who weren't allowed to receive education back then. Nowadays, kanji, hiragana and katakana are all used in daily Japanese texts. Number two, silence is considered politeness. Japanese people generally pay close attention to those around them and making noise that disturbs others is considered rude. On trains and buses in Japan, people often speak softly to each other. There are announcements asking everyone to switch their phones to silent mode and you'll rarely see someone talking on the phone at cafes, restaurants and public places. Even neighbors in Japan will readily complain if you make noise. However, there's an exception you don't need to speak softly at restaurants, izakaya's bars, where it's entirely acceptable to loudly say sumimasen meaning sorry to get the waiter's attention. Number 1. Baseball is more popular than sumo. When it comes to sports in Japan, people immediately think of sumo a traditional martial art not for the faint-hearted, but few know that baseball is actually the most watched and played sport in this country. Baseball was introduced to Japan in the early Meiji period, a time when adopting Western customs and practices was prevalent. There are two professional baseball leagues in Japan, as well as numerous high school and university tournaments across the country. The most beloved star in the land of the rising sun isn't a singer or actor but the Japanese baseball legend Suzuki Ichiro, the nation's idol. Do you enjoy playing baseball? Leave a comment to share your thoughts. So we've explored 35 fascinating facts about Japan, what do you think about the facts I've shared above or have you visited this beautiful and interesting country yet? I'm quite impressed with the dining etiquette here. Remember to comment and share your thoughts with me. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated with the latest videos from us. See you in the next videos.